G'day there, guys. I participate in Full Contact Origami on the weekends to blow off steam. It's Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash Am I the A-Hole. Now, if you love today's content, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbie, a like on the video, and tell me what you think of all these down in the comments below. Thank you. Posted by user ThrowRAIZG. Titled, Am I the A-Hole for not saying I love you to my daughter? My youngest daughter is 22. Whenever she calls, she ends the call with, I love you, and I say, you too. At our last talk, right when we were about to get off the line, she asked, why don't you ever say I love you back? I told her because meaningful love is shown through actions. And she said, I want you to say it. And I said, sweetie, you can't force me to say it. Then she said, then I guess I won't talk to you again until you're ready. I thought she was joking, but when I walked into the living room today, my wife was on the phone with her and she said, Wait, hun, your dad just walked in. And she said that she didn't want to talk to me unless I said I loved her. Even my wife laughed because, listen, nobody on my side of the family says I love you. My parents never said it to my siblings and I, my biological uncles and aunts don't say it, and my grandparents don't say it. They would say things like, I'm proud of you. You make me so happy. I'm so glad you're my child. I don't know what I would do without you, and so on. All things I've told my children growing up. We believe that love is given and shown through actions. So I get awkward when girlfriends would say it and expect me to say it back. I never did. I never said I love you to my wife or any of my four daughters or three sons or anybody in my whole life. But what I think it is, is that my older children grew up when a lot of my side of the family was still alive, so they understood where I got it from. My youngest daughter mostly grew up around my wife's family, who says I love you all the time. Still, some people might say, oh, just say it, it won't cost you anything. But to me, it will. It's cheap to me. By saying it, it would feel to me that all the love I've shown to her through my actions over the years were meaningless. OP, I'm gonna be honest here, that's a cop-out. That's a complete cop-out, you saying that. I don't believe you. To her, I love you is shown through spoken word. We all have different love languages. Yours was through actions, hers is through words because that's the environment she's been raised in, and you know that's the environment she's raised in. She's not getting that same intention from you, she's seeing your actions and she's judging you by those actions. She feels loved because the actions you're showing to her are not ones that she correlates with love. I think this is a cop-out because saying I love you is still an action and you're showing your love through going the extra mile for her. Just because you're uncomfortable with it, it's your daughter after all, and does your daughter not deserve to feel loved? Your actions of telling her, it isn't real if I say I love you, I can say everything else you wouldn't understand, that's directly showing her that you don't love her in this moment. That's not fair on your daughter. Go the extra mile, do it for her, and eventually I believe you will change your mind. You're the a-hole in this situation. You're the a-hole. So you don't love her? Because otherwise, why won't you say it? You're just telling the truth. Just because you show it by actions, doesn't mean that you can't also say it once in a while. This refusal to say I love you, reminds me of those people who never say sorry. My mum's like that. She's of the opinion that apologising doesn't change the thing that happened, so there's no point. But you don't apologise for yourself or to undo the things that you did to hurt someone. You apologise because it shows the other person that you acknowledge you hurt them, and you want to affirm their feelings. It's the same with saying you love someone. You do it for them, not for you. My parents never apologised to me or each other when I was growing up, because they bought into the whole, family means never having to say you're sorry thing, and honestly, it gave me a really messed up view of families and relationships. I don't understand why people insist on being like my parents or OP. I grew up in a family that doesn't apologise. We just went to our separate corners until we weren't angry anymore. Then ignored that anything happened. It's taken me a hot second to undo that habit. Screaming matches at 4pm, silence from everyone for 3 hours, 
laughing together while listening to music at 7pm. No apologies ever spoken by anyone. I think the dog is the only one that ever gets apologised to. Hella functional, lol. OP, your daughter is telling you that the best way you can show it to her is to say it. You're the a-hole. I was on the fence until I read this one. I don't like to say I love you either, because I feel like the less often I say it, the more it means. Plus, words of affirmation is my lowest ranking love language. However, OP's daughter basically just told them, this is my love language, I have a hard time hearing yours. And OP basically replied with, I don't care, I'm using mine, deal with it. Which is not how that works. You're the a-hole. Edit, just to clarify, I didn't mean to imply the more I say it, the less it means. When I said, the less I say it, the more it means. One can absolutely say I love you a billion times a day, and it can still mean just as much. Let's say she dies tomorrow, and you find a letter that says, I wish you would have said it just once. Tomorrow night, will you wish you would have said it? Because she's basically writing that letter now. She's just not dead yet. Posted by user Side Kara Maya, titled Am I the A-hole for announcing my engagement at my twin sister's wedding? My twin sister and I, both 24, have always had some kind of weird rivalry. It's never really came from my side, always hers. Our dad left our family when we were 10, and because she wasn't that close to our mum and I was, it created the resentment she now has for me. We have ups and downs in terms of our relationship. About a week ago, my sister got married to her boyfriend of one year. I've never really liked their relationship, nor did I approve of them getting married so soon, but I went to the wedding. My fiancé and I got engaged about a week beforehand, and due to her wedding, she asked if I would keep it under the radar until after the wedding, which I hesitantly agreed to. To me, it was just a sign of insecurity. My fiancé and I have been together for almost seven years. She shacked up with the first person who showed interest. The wedding comes, and it's all fine, until the reception. It was fairly large, and a lot of people who I hadn't seen since we graduated high school were there, so I obviously took it as a chance to catch up. I've just got engaged. I'm not going to go take my ring off to appease my sister. So naturally, I got questions which I honestly responded to. I didn't go out of my way to tell anybody we were engaged, but if someone asked, I'd told them, which I don't see anything wrong with. It's unlikely I'll see many of the attendees again, so why should I have to wait? Towards the end of the night, my mum and sister pulled me aside absolutely furious with me, saying I'd made the night all about me, which I absolutely hadn't. It was a quick congratulations with each conversation, and that was it. I didn't get on top of the stage and announce it. They've both cut me off for apparently being incapable of letting other people have their time to shine, and pretty much everyone in our family and close circle of friends has told me I'm in the wrong. Am I the a-hole? I initially thought that it was an everyone sucks here judgement, because you shouldn't be expected to take your engagement ring off after you get engaged, it kind of seems silly to tell that to someone, but at the same time, he absolutely had the choice to do it just for this wedding, for people he'd never see again because it doesn't matter. Like he said, it doesn't matter if these people know that he's engaged because they're not going to see him again. So this flipped my thought process to empathizing with the married family, thinking that, oh, he kind of is upstaging it. He definitely has the choice to not do it, and he's still doing it anyway. That does make him an a-hole, regardless of how he thinks he wants to justify this one. I think it's simply unacceptable to announce relationship goals like that, especially engagements. Engagements, even if it's in this form, it's a no-go at someone else's wedding. Please just don't do it. Control yourself. It hasn't been formally announced yet, and this is a pseudo-announcement of sorts, going around at the wedding doing it. It absolutely breaks that rule. You're the a-hole. You're the a-hole. Everyone else has told you so. Why are you expecting a different answer here? The way you wrote about the situation and the way you went about it sounds so slimy and snaggy. If you didn't want to do it, then you should have said no when they asked you to keep it under wraps. 
definitely not a one-sided rivalry, and you're not as innocent as you make yourself out to be. Right? OP said she was close with her mum. If the mum is calling them an a-hole, that says a lot. I'm very close with my mum, and she'll call me out if I do something crappy, and if she thinks something I did was an a-hole move, then I know I was definitely in the wrong. The weird thing is, OP doesn't give any examples of what the sister did that would indicate they were in competition. OP, you're the a-hole, stop thinking you're so high and mighty because you have more time in a relationship under your belt. They could be totally compatible and form a deep connection in a year's time. Stop being crappy. You're the a-hole. Why is it a sign of insecurity that your sis doesn't want you running around telling everyone about your engagement at her own wedding? It's her day. Let her have it. Not gonna lie. I got some kind of pleasure and glee reading both her mother and sister went to no contact with her, and most likely more will too. Maybe one day she will learn to be a bit less of a horrible human. Posted by user no crap Sherlock one titled, Am I the a-hole for calling out a girl who was acting like a hoe during dinner at a restaurant? Excuse me? I, 21 female, don't make friends all that easy. I'm picky about who I want to hang out with because I believe you really need to vibe to be friends. That said, I'm not normally a mean person, just selective with who I really let into my life. My boyfriend, 22 male, knows this and asked if I wanted to go to dinner with a few of his military buddies. We are both in the army, so this would be a great way for me to make some friends, since I tend to vibe pretty well with other military people. Anyway, so we go to this dinner at a family restaurant, and there's three other guys and an Air Force girl. I crap you not when I say she was acting like a hoe all night, and I immediately didn't like her. Some examples of her behaviour. One, calls her two-year-old kid a crotch goblin and brags that she pawns him off to her mother because she hates how much he cries. Two, mentioned loudly and several times that she's slept with two of the guys also eating dinner. Also, very in-depth description of said sexual encounters. Three, told my boyfriend that she was going to steal me from him and showed me a picture of her breasts. Four, asked my boyfriend if he would eat her ass later, winked, and slipped him her number. There's more, but for the sake of the post, I'll stop there. So at one point, one of the guys was showing us a picture of a guy's dick that had been bitten by a snake. He's fine now. As a medic, I really wanted to see purely out of curiosity. She kept trying to get him to put the phone away, and making a huge deal about how we were in a public restaurant, and it wasn't appropriate. I had had too many drinks at this point and finally snapped and said something like, why the hell are you suddenly concerned about your public image? You've been acting like a hoe all night and obviously you've seen plenty of dick. Can't handle one more. She got ticked off and left in a huff after throwing water in my food and called me a tramp. The guys all laughed and said that she had it coming, but I feel kind of bad. Am I the a-hole? ETA. Forgot to mention that she kept grabbing one of the guy's dicks after he said no, and had just had his fiancé of five years leave him for a friend. ETA, I apologize for not making it clear, but the rest of the group tried to politely get her to stop several times, both groping and comments. We were actually all being fairly respectful, but she really took it to another level. Also, none of us were drunk, just having a few drinks with our meal. Unpopular opinion here, I'm gonna say that OP was not the a-hole. If it was a guy in the same situation, you wouldn't really think a woman saying that to him for groping women and doing all that and being so abrasive. She wouldn't be an a-hole, she would be in the right because it would be her protecting her friends from someone harassing them and not taking no for an answer. I think she did this in a very confrontational and drunk way, but given how this woman was interacting with the group, and the level of drunkenness, and then this sudden change in tune saying, oh, put that dick pic away, I think it's fully acceptable what OP did. I think it's not the a-hole. I think everyone sucks here could be applied to the situation, although I personally don't agree with it. Everyone sucks here. Lots of rude behavior here for a public place. 
It sounds like she has a lot of issues and you didn't respond well, but then it sounds like you also have some stuff to work out since you drank too much, as you said yourself, and were part of the rowdiness, sharing the dick pic in a family restaurant until you weren't. For real, is this just the military culture or something? I was cringing the entire time. Like, it's all good everyone's just sleeping together, etc. Getting drunk in a family restaurant and looking at pics of a snake butt and a dick? Name calling, etc. Like, reserve this behavior for your own home. Don't inflict it on other people in a restaurant. And yes, OP, I was cringing at your comment to her as well. It all seems so trashy to me, like everyone needs to learn to behave in public. OP says, I was drinking, yes, but I was far from rowdy. Honestly, she was making a scene the entire time. I was trying to get to know the other people, but she kept taking over the conversation. We got a lot of crappy looks throughout the night, and literally all of them were directed at her. I guarantee you they weren't just directed at her. Also, we were in a corner where no one would be able to see anything, but they could certainly hear it all. Tables were far enough apart, for obvious reasons, that no one would have been able to see that there was a deformed dick pic. Which means that, in a family restaurant, people could hear you talking about some guy's snake-bitten dick. And I highly doubt that it was the only inappropriate conversation that you had at your table. I agree with the everyone sucks here verdict. Obviously, the woman who sexually harassed you and your boyfriend, and sexually assaulted someone, sucks more. But you and the rest of your group seem like you don't know how to behave like normal people in public either. Pro tip... Don't discuss anyone's genitals in public. Also, I hope the dude who had his dick bitten gave consent for that photo to be shared. If not, the guy sharing it with you was the a-hole for that reason too. Posted by user f g g g g g 43 titled, Am I the a-hole for walking out of my house in shock over my wife's priorities? Would just like to preface this by saying I, 37 male, walked out not in malicious protest, but because I wanted to cool off. So here goes. My wife, 38 female, and my daughter, 11, got into a jockey discussion about alien invasions and apocalyptic situation. Then my daughter asks if my wife would protect her in this situation, and my wife says, I love you more than I'll love anybody else in the world. Yes. She says that in front of me. My wife then puts her arm around my shoulder and goes on to say that her father, aka me, and I would use each other as shields against any danger that comes to her, meaning she'd gladly sacrifice me. At that point, I picked up my keys and said, gee, thanks, go ahead and start lunch without me. My wife suddenly gets self-righteous and says there was no way I could expect to choose a spouse over a kid. I feel like she just had a crap on our entire marriage and life vows. And the principle aside, the fact I was furious I think should have been enough to excuse me leaving the house. So I left the house and drove around to cool off. Then I went over to my sister's house because I told her how upset I was, and as a result, she and her spouse invited me to have dinner with them. I may have ignored some calls from my wife, but she knew where I was. And in addition, I just couldn't see her or be in the house at that moment. I always felt like my wife loved the kids more than me, and it hurts. The fact that she would hypothetically and just casually throw me to the wolves was making me question if I loved her more than she loved me, and if so, why I bothered to give her my loyalty. When there could be other women, you know, like my sister, who valued their spouse more than anything. Am I the a-hole? Not for my beliefs, but for the fact that I took the time to cool off. I needed this time because I was seriously and suddenly regretting a lot of the sacrifices I made for this woman when it wasn't like I didn't have other options. Women in their early 20s who have hit on me, but who I ignored in favor of the woman who I thought would put me first. Jesus Christ, dude, you have some problems. You have some serious problems going on. Why has this one hypothetical situation just unraveled your entire reality? These are just insecurities gone wild, it seems like. 
I really think you need to have a sit down and talk to your wife about this because you two are obviously not on the same page. Maybe if you have an in-depth discussion with her and understand where she's coming from and why she's saying that, and maybe that it's not okay to say that you'd sacrifice your kids to your kids, how that wouldn't be a cool thing. I don't know, man. I feel like you've just jumped at the first sign of, oh my god, my wife wouldn't do the same for me, without thinking of everything surrounding this. It's a bit crazy. Get some help. You're the a-hole. You're the a-hole. And you should consider therapy to find out why your emotional growth was stunted in your teens. This really sounds like it was written by a crazy person. I kept waiting for it to make sense, but it just never did. But wait, did you read the bit about him not banging hot women in their 20s? He could have done it if he'd known his wife would save his child over him, you see. So it makes perfect sense. You're the a-hole, obviously. This man is absolutely fudging delusional. Who in the hell gets this upset at their spouse for saying that in such an extreme hypothetical scenario, they would protect their child over their spouse? He sounds so similar to my father, I have been laughing for a good minute. My father said very similar things throughout my childhood, to me and my sis, so I believe people like this exist. My father will complain all the time that my mum cared more about me and my sister than him. I am so happy that she left him. After she left him, it was, I don't know why I stayed with your mother. I had women half my age all over me, and I always refused them. I was a professional bartender for many years in an affluent northern VA suburb, and I swear, every single divorced guy that hit on me said the same thing. After we had kids, I took a back seat on her priorities. And I always thought, maybe if you helped with the kids, she would have had more time for you, guy. Being jealous of your own kids is ridiculous, but very common. You're the a-hole, dude. You are way overreacting about a stupid hypothetical scenario. What exactly did you want your wife to say to your daughter? Oh, of course I wouldn't save you, sweetie. And your daddy wouldn't either. We would both let you die because daddy is the most important person in this house. And yes, storming out of the house like a child and refusing to answer the phone makes you even more of an a-hole than getting your fifis hurt just because you think you should be put before your child. Not to mention his addendum that he basically chose to marry this woman over better options. Dude, <laughs> please. Because he thought this woman would mollycoddle him the most and has a temper tantrum because his chosen doormat dares to care about the feelings of their minor children over his fifis. Posted by user throwraafs, titled, Am I the a-hole for not inviting my daughter to a family gathering? My ex-wife and I split amicably when our daughters were 16, 14, and 12. My oldest daughter told me that she hated me and that she wished I wasn't her father. The last time I tried to speak to her was at her graduation. I stood off to the side as she took pictures. My other two daughters ran over and hugged me, but my oldest daughter pretended not to see me until her friends started pointing to me and saying, I think that's your father. She came over and said, Why do you have to ruin everything? I left, and my ex ran up to the car as I was about to pull off and asked what had happened. I told her, and she said I'm so sorry, and sat in the car and cried with me. Then she got angry and wanted to make my daughter apologize, but I told her to leave it alone because she was 18 now, and it was supposed to be her day. My daughter called later on and left an apology on my voicemail, which was obviously forced. I didn't even respond. <sighs> Come on, man. The years passed, and I got to experience everything I missed with my younger daughters. I was there to intimidate their boyfriends when they went to prom. Ha! <laughs> I took pictures with them at graduation. I saw them go off to college. Now my daughters are 26, 24, and 22. The oldest one reached out to me and asked if we could meet up. When we did, she said she was sorry for everything and hoped that we could just move on, and I asked her to be more specific and tell me what exactly she was sorry for. But she just went silent, so I told her, when you're ready to talk again, call me. Oh, dude. I had a little family get-together. Just a little cookout with my wife, my ex-wife and her husband, and my two daughters and their husbands. 
Everyone knew about the graduation incident, so they knew why my oldest daughter wasn't there. But at some point during the cookout, my oldest daughter called one of my youngest daughters, and when she found out about the gathering and that I didn't invite her, she started crying and hung up. What's wrong with these people and abusing others in their lives, especially their kids? Do we just not have a paternal instinct to be like, you know what, these kids are young, they make mistakes. We gotta just allow them to make the mistakes and hurt people and then learn from the hurt they cause so that we can lead them to be better people. And in fact, us shutting them down and stunting their growth like that is not conductive to proper mental health. It does nothing for anyone besides hurt them. And me being a child will only continue to hurt my daughter. I don't know what screw went loose in Opie's head where he did these very malicious things to his daughter, who obviously was just going through a stage in her life where, you know, it's normal for us to be like, don't take pictures of me, you're embarrassing me. They don't understand it, they're not you. So you're the a-hole for doing what you've done. She might have been the a-hole a decade ago, but you're it now. Her behavior was unkind and hurtful, and it's okay to still be hurt over it, but it's been eight years since her graduation. She tried to reach out, and it seems like you were merely focused on having your feelings about her teenage behavior validated by asking her to list her transgressions for you rather than actually re-establishing a relationship. And if you decide that you don't want a relationship with her, then that's your choice. But you're going to have to accept that it's your choice, not just her fault. She may have been the one to damage the relationship to begin with, but if she's trying to reach out and you're shooting her down, that's on you. Although the post doesn't go into detail about why the daughter hates him, from personal experience, children rarely hate their parents for no reason. There is missing information here. Ding ding ding. And if the father cannot even fathom while the oldest child who statistically does the worst in divorces, amicable and otherwise, would have a grudge or some bad feelings in their teens, then he wasn't doing his due diligence. You are the a-hole OP. The years went by, and you didn't even respond even if the apology was forced? You could have been the bigger person or parent and said, you know, I can understand having confusing and mixed feelings. You were harsh, but it was your day. You apologized and I appreciate that. I'll always be your father, and whenever you feel like you're ready to talk, I'll be here to listen, kiddo. Not the a-hole. A bunch of folks on here have no idea how adult apologies work. It is far more than just saying the words. You don't get credit for showing up and speaking, you have to put in the effort to resolve the hurt and move forward together. She did nothing close to what was needed and expected for him to carry through the burden while she still acted like a child. She is 26, so that does not fly anymore. His party, he gets to invite who he feels comfortable with and wants to spend time around. Just like when it was her day, she got to dictate that he not be around. Agreed. When I read she just wanted to move on, I rolled my eyes. Like, pretend nothing happened? Not even acknowledge that she was the a-hole? Okay, and I think that's where we're going to end today's episode, guys. As always, I do hope you enjoyed it, and maybe even learned something from these stories. Just want to say a quick shout out to my Patreon subscribers and my channel members. You guys should be on the screen right now. If you do see yourself, I want you to give yourself a little pat on the back for being amazing, and supporting me on this channel, this uh, little journey we're going on on the YouTubes. I really appreciate it, and you guys enabled me to do all this amazing work. So if uh, you do see yourself, I love your face, and I'm happy to see you. Also guys, if you want to pitch in your own support, you don't have to, but channel links are down in the description below to support the Patreon, the channel membership, whatever you want to do. It's kind of like tipping me if you feel like I'm doing a good job on this channel. I will be opening up avenues for content on those in the future. Just right now I'm kind of bogged down and stuck in Ireland, but you know. It is what it is. Anyway, guys, with that said, I do hope you have a wonderful day today. Whatever you're up to, I'd love to know down in the comments below. I do hope you have a good day, night, sleep. Whatever you're up to today, tell me, and I'll see you in the next episode, guys. Bye.